when you leave here, remembering the name of God. You know why? It's four words. Rule. Never start a business with more than three words. People won't remember. We didn't name ourselves a government head, just saying. You know, so Small Business Development Center, we were created by the SBA, and we service and help small businesses. I am the director, and I'll tell you a little bit about our story and our, our services, but the focus of the presentation will be on size up LBI, local business intelligence. It's a resource that you and you has 24-7 access to, no username, no login, no password, none of that. You can go just right into this tool. So, small business development centers. We're the largest management assistance program serving the U.S. business uh, dis uh, sector. Really, we're huge, and yet not many people really know about us. We're a collaboration of SBA, state, local, and private sector funding resources, 900 centers nationwide. You know, the one thing they didn't really put into our budget is called marketing. And we're technical advisors. So what do y'all think? That could be a little bit of the issue out there. Provide technical assistance to existing and startup small businesses. And I'll clarify that in a second here. So we have five advisors. Four offices serving just Tarrant County. That's only, I only cover Tarrant County. Advisors have banking, accounting, finance, operational <coughs> experience. So those are really, we're really more on the technical side. And a full suite of services to facilitate access to capital. Because at the end of the day, that's really the number one thing that determines growth. If a business will continue to grow, they've got to have access to capital. Or in their business, they have to have a lot of something called cash flow. How many of y'all are familiar with what cash flow is? Now, oh yes, we have an educated audience. Yeah, you've got to have money running through the business and enough money, enough extra money for growth. <coughs> There's no cost for advising services. We do not charge. And that, and we avoid using the word free. Because we say free, and people think, oh, well, how much is that worth? But we don't charge for these services, and we are very good at what we do. Advisors, advisory services, business loan assistance, financial analysis and benchmarking, helping small businesses compare themselves to the competitors. QuickBooks troubleshooting, we don't do the accounting for a small business. We do get into their financial accounting system. It doesn't have to be QuickBooks. We'll troubleshoot, we'll tell them what you're doing wrong. And it's very interesting with QuickBooks, how many uh, clients we work with that they're using it for primarily only one thing. Invoicing. Because it's easy. Invoice with QuickBooks. And then they say, how do I use the rest of this other stuff? They go, you know, and so we help take them through a process. But we don't do their accounting for them. We really troubleshoot. Business plan development and business plans that we work with our clients, these have to be real, you know, it's a real deal. They're putting money out there, either starting or growing. Most of our clients are already in business, but we do work with startups. We are our main office at the uh, Business Assistance Center, Rosedale 35. Have, how many of y'all have ever been to or heard of the Business Assistance Center? Yeah, well, very good. You know, it is a great. Uh, we call it. It's a compound. That's what we call it. Their score is there. Another uh, advising arm of the SBA, and they're a little bit different than we are. SCORE is volunteers. We're actually employees at the SBDC. The SCORE is 45 strong in Tarrant County. My office has five advisors, me, and the admins. So capacity for us is less, but we're gold differently. So small businesses can come visit both of us, and we do have our clients move back and forth. So there really is a lot of great resources for small businesses that, uh, that need that assistance. Market research is a key piece because, at the, you know, really, end of the day, most decisions, if you don't base it on fact, you're, you know, you really are going to put yourself in a very perilous situation. Do not make decisions based on assumptions. What you think, what you feel, what you believe, what you hope is true, because that's oftentimes where you can lose the money. So we uh, provide market research. The tool you're going to see today is a market research tool. So size up, go to the website and 
click on size up, it's going to cover four areas, benchmark performance, competitive intelligence, advertising analysis, demographic analysis. And actually, it's in demographics, it also looks at consumer expenditure analysis, of course, all in one tool. And 24-7, you have access. There is no, again, no username, no password. Once you click on size up, you're going to go right into this tool. First time you do it, it'll probably take some, even sometimes 30 seconds or longer to load. It's a huge database, but you'll finally see it show up. From then on, your computer probably retains it, and you, know, you can get in pretty fast each time. So if you go to the tool and click on select, you're going to have some options here. First of all, enter your industry. Enter any keyword related to the business you're in or want to start. So for 18 years, I owned wholesale, retail, beauty supplies, and salons. I started in 1976. I was just a beauty supply. Y'all know Sally's, don't you? Yeah, Sally sells retail, wholesale. Well, that's what I was doing. Sally's really weren't even the market back then. So it was something different. You know, how did I get into that business? I knew nothing. I was not from the beauty uh, salon industry. I have not cut a head of hair in my entire life. You wouldn't want me to cut yours. You know, but I saw, an on, I, as an entrepreneur, I saw an opportunity. So I said, you know, it's like, wait a minute. You know, I was managing health clubs in Hearst, Texas. President's first lady. If you remember that name, don't admit it. <laughs> You're dating yourself, I'm telling you. President's first lady. Across the parking lot was a beauty supply that said open to the public. Now, growing up in the, you know, 50s and the 60s, unless you had a license, you couldn't even go into a beauty supply. And yet, it's said open to the public. I said, I think that's me. I went in, and it was life-changing. I don't know, gentlemen, you probably will connect with this, but ladies, do you ever remember using a hairspray called Aquanet? <laughs> <laughs> do you just want to hold your nose and make you spray? I went in, and they introduced me to Tresemme. Oh, oh yeah. Changing. This is before it was ever in the stores. And it was like, oh my gosh, life changing. So after about a year, I was tired of working six days a week, 10 hours a day. I got paid very, very well, extremely well. And so it kind of kept me working. And so I decided, you know what? I'm going to go ask them if I can franchise. And I didn't know what it really meant to franchise, except for my dad at one point in time actually opened up a small business. He only lasted a year, so I learned a lot of lessons about what a lot might not do. But the you know, reality is, is I didn't have, you know, I didn't really have the secret sauce. They did. So I talked them into letting me franchise, and two years later, I finally was able to get the dollars, the initial amount to open up for the franchise. Now, it wasn't easy to do, because I definitely went to one of the three Fs. Y'all know what the three Fs are for, fi for financing your business? Friends, family, and pools. <laughs> and I found myself a food family member, I did. And he actually invested, well, he wasn't so foolish. You know, he ended up with 35% of the business. I had 35% of the business. And the franchiser got, what, 25? Had 30%, whatever. He had, what? I just gave away the money. I didn't know it. I just, I really didn't know. And that's why ignorance is not bliss when you're starting a business. You know, you always want to get the facts and what is going to, at the end of the day, what's going to be your profit? You know, what piece of the pie are you actually getting? Well, actually, it was a great business. Within two years of launching, I was able to uh, uh, get my own apartment. You see, starting out, I had to, unfortunately, my partner, who was my brother-in-law, I had to live with him and his wife. And his wife, this is really, this was hard. This was really hard. She was my sister. For two years, <laughs> I had to live in my sister's household. But eventually, the business started to grow and it grew and it grew because the community was growing. It was over in the southwest area of Fort Worth and in the 70s and the 80s this was a booming, growing area. And I rode that train for 18 years and I learned a lot that you can never be complacent in small business. You have to always, and it's a key word, you must do this, innovate. Because many years after I'd been in business, Sally didn't put me out of business. I, that's when I turned around and added a salon. I had the square footage. They didn't have, have y'all ever seen a swan in, in Sally's? No. I innovate. And now I'm making even more money because I've got all these professional lines. Paul Mitchell, Nexus, Sebastian. Hard to figure out. True fact. I had 1,600 square feet. And at one point in the 80s, 
uh, made in the early 90s. I sold more Paul Mitchell than any other salon in Fort Worth. Because I was really, I was not a hairdresser, I was an entrepreneur. And I was figuring out how to get this done. I had an 18 professional line. Nothing could stop me except for something did. And it's the fact that, you know, you can't always control everything in your environment. And we'll kind of get into this in a little bit as to the rise and fall of businesses, but there does not have to be the rise and fall of an entrepreneur. You go on to other things. Now, the, the real formula in being an entrepreneur is to recognize opportunities to, you know, calculate the risk, the risk in it, and to always, always, always continue to innovate. So, let's move on through the tool. So, I, I, what keyword do you think I'm about to put in there? How about beauty? So, if I put a keyword, just one word related to my industry, whatever industry you want to, uh, that you're going to start, that you're already in, or that you just want to research, put the keyword and notice you can see beauty salons. You could have seen also beauty wholesale retail. Once you do that, the next thing, add a city. Every city in Tarrant and Dallas counties is in here. You know, I have a, uh, an organization that funds Dallas County for me. You know, you know, say a little prayer for me. I'm about to go back for more money for the next year. But this covers both of those counties. You can find any city in any of these either two counties. Then you create. You will go into what's called the benchmarking tool. Now, this is a very flat big version that we have here. I'm going to unclaps it in just a minute. The gauge over here tells you whether you're doing good or not so good. Closer to the green, I put in here my revenue was 200000 Now, whether I'm starting up or whether I'm an existing business, you know, you're going to plug in a number related to that industry. Remember, every industry is going to be in here. 200000 It says, well, if you're doing 200000 that's actually pretty good. You're getting towards the green. Year started, I said, I started in 2015. So this would be an existing business. And it tells me, well, that wasn't a great year to start. Hmm. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see why in just a minute. And it says have salary per employee, 24,000. I'm gonna pay 24. And they're saying, well, that's, you know, that's pretty good. And I have three employees. And they're saying, well, that's you know pretty good. Uh, cost effectiveness, what's well, above average? Hmm. In fact, it shows me looking pretty good compared to Tarrant County, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, and the good old USA. So it's going to be benchmarking with all these areas. How, let's say, how accurate is the data? All the data coming into this tool is not updated once a year. The various data points, and there's hundreds of them, are constantly updating. And then typically, I'm, I know when it's getting updated because I'm sitting there tapping my uh, toes, waiting for the, the images to load. But usually you'll never run into that situation because they do it really, really late at night. And who's the? Well, that would be the company that owns SISA. And originally it was GIS Planning. The owner got bought out by a much larger company. They kept the name. Now he's on the, uh, the top management team. But he took SISA up and kept it for himself because this really was one of his unique tools. So from there, if you had scrolled down, let me go back over here so you can see that. Do you, do you see the top of this little map right over here? If you scroll down, now you're going to see, this is a Google map, but it is a, um, it is a GIS map. It's at the zip code level. And you can see immediately where all the money is right over here. So if you're going to start a business, you tend to say, I don't want to be over here, I'm going to be over here. You can zoom in and out. But here's the deal, it is a zip code. Now, wait a minute. I've got some adults in here. Usually, a lot of times, I'm with uh, younger entrepreneurs. Of course, it's a broad range when I deal with entrepreneurs. But anytime I'm with students, you know, they sometimes are not familiar with all the geographic areas. So we know this is a zip code. Uh, does anybody know what's smaller than a zip code? Geographic area? They're called census tracts. Y'all know that. Well, there's something smaller than a census tract. It's called a block group. And this is about five city blocks. If you want data, you want data at the zip code, census tract, or would you much rather have it at a block group for analysis? This tool is going to do it for you. So let's go over to the year started. And we said, well, we started in 2015. And you can see at the national level, the trend's going up. And then, boom, 
2011, well, we had just gotten out of the Great Recession, and then boom, down it goes, because too many people tried starting a business in this industry, peaked again, down again in 2015. So why would I start a business in 2015? Because there's always going to be people starting businesses that are successful. Do you have the right formula? Now, down here is the uh, city, county, metro, state. And they, uh, of course, this is the nation. They look like they're flatlining, but if you just uncheck the boxes down, now you see a very similar pattern with city and county, don't you? Now, this is just Fort Worth. Every city in Tarrant County and Dallas County. I actually have Dallas County right now, too. I'm crossing my fingers that I hold on to it. It's not a cheap tool for my center. Every, every city. And you're going to find in the last piece of this, every address is in this database. And there's amazing things you can do with it. So you can see very similar pattern nationally, very similar pattern locally. And we look at salaries, 24000 It says that, yeah, you're really in line pretty much with everybody. You're paying decent wages for this, uh, this industry. But wait a minute, over here, you know, you've got fewer employees. And there, is that good or is that bad? Well, it's good if I'm doing 200,000 just like the rest of them, because what does that mean? I'm more cost effective. Right. I have actually Fort Worth, Tarrant, five employees average. Then for the other areas, the state, Tarrant, um, excuse me, state, Texas, and USA, it's going to be four employees. I'm doing the same with less. So more cost effective. So let's go over and it shows us right here, you know, right up front you saw this very same slide, more cost effective, but what so many people don't take into account is turnover. If you have three employees and one of them leaves, what happens? Eek! You, you know, can you fill it? Well, sure you can fill it. I mean, hairdressers are all over the place. But ladies, now gentlemen, you may go to a salon and get your hair cut, you may go to a barber shop, but ladies, you're usually at a salon. And I hope. The, uh, uh, but really, if your hairdresser leaves, how many times do you follow her? That's right. So if you don't want to lose people. I've got, at the SBDC, I have a staff of uh, myself, and then there's also four full-time advisors. If, if one of them leaves, I'm going to croak. They, they're really good at what they do. And then I have to go and train people and ramp them back up. It's the stark story of business, isn't it? Keeping good employees is critical. So local turnover in this industry, the salon industry, is 13%. That's not bad, but I used to call it musical salon chairs when I had my, my uh, center up because how easily they could turn over. I fixed that problem. You know, I made a deal with them. You know, how many times you go into a, supply, a salon or a, uh, uh, even your barbershop and they try to sell you products? Well, what I turned around and did is made a deal with all my hairdressers and my manicures. If you don't take a commission off the products they buy, I'll lease to you at $125. Are you ready for this? In, in the eight years I had my salon, I had only two turnovers. And I made a bucket load, they made a bucket load. That's innovation. It's how do you create a win-win. Don't go for just the pennies. Go for the bucks. Advertising section. When you go into this section, it's a radius report as the crow flies. How many of y'all fly to, uh, from home to work? No. We drive, don't we? Well, we'll address that in a little bit. You have five different reports you can choose from. Each report has eight variables. You can drop down a box and get eight other variable choices. And you can, um, you can also click on this right here for more filters. I've got an eight mile radius, but I could have done a three mile radius. You know, I could have done, tried to do a one mile radius, sometimes a little tricky. And down here, it will tell you for wherever these little balloons are, and the redder the color, the better. Tell you the city of Fort Worth, well, this is about 19 to 20 million, but it's an eight mile radius. So tighten up your radius when you do these reports. Over to the competition, this is a key piece. Automatically, all these little red dots, guess what? Those are the competitors. Those are all competitors. And the balloons are the top 10, which we list right down here if you scroll down. We'll look at it in a second. 
Now, I can add more key words. Instead of just hair salons or the salon industry, I started adding nail techs, nail, you know, nail uh, salons, uh, day spas. They're, in essence, my competitors. They can take dollars away from me. Because, if, you know, you wake up one day and say, oh, I'm going to go get my hair done. But wait a minute, I can wait another week because I really need my nails done. That's also why I have nail salon. But you get the drift. You know, how do you have the customer spend more time with you and not more with your competitors? I want to know who all the competitors were. And then I also can very specifically add the name of a competitor that I want to pin. You see this little pin down here? When I put in that, uh, put in Salon 70, you can see the pin and you can see where it's pinned on the map. Now, if I scroll down, you can see what happens is that when I click on it, Salon 70, it pops up a box. It tells me not only uh, the uh, phone number, it tells me the, uh, the, uh, the actual website address. So you can actually collect some data pretty quickly from the tool. Now, if you turned around from there and jumped over to the next section, which this is the, the actual customers. Now, remember, I was a salon and a supply. So my customers, I went after wedding photographers and modeling agencies. I didn't want the photographer coming over to my place. I wanted him to send me all of his brides. I wanted, him, I wanted the modeling agencies to send me their, their models so that we could pretty them up. Now, so it was all, so they actually were a customer, but it was really their customers that were my customers. Then the, and uh, again, you can enter whatever keywords uh, are related to, to your customer base. And you can see that there's fewer of, the, of these customers than there were, of course, the competitors. There's no lack of competitors out there. And each competitor, even if it's a weak competitor that fails after a year, can take dollars from you. So from there, let's find the suppliers. Now the suppliers are in blue. Beauty salons, equipment, and wholesale. That, were my, that was my suppliers. Companies like Armstrong, McCall, Sally Beauty Supply was not my supplier. You know, they are, they're pretty much a kind of a, a retail, they do wholesale, but it's not the same type of supplier I was actually using. But Armstrong, McCall's uh, were a primary one. There's a numerous uh, Worth Beauty Supply. That's one that's been local for many, many years. So those suppliers automatically, when I put in uh, beauty supplies, equipment, you know, and wholesale, they popped up on the map. And of course, there's fewer then. But with this tool, you can actually zoom in, and competitors, customers, and suppliers are all on one map at once. And if you look real close, you see that long line just right in the road. That is a road in Fort Worth with all those salons and all those customers lined up. Does anybody know what road that is? Camp it's Camp Bowie. You're right. Camp Bowie is so, it's, it really is uh, where you almost say, oh my gosh, it's probably 10% of all salons in Tarrant County are on that one road. So, look over here where it says consumer expenditures. If you were to drop down that little box, you've got a whole list of uh, different variables that you can select from. Now, this one, I selected personal care. I drilled down several layers, and now my map is color-coded. And it's telling me consumer expenditure totals for personal care services for females by zip code. And you can see, well, shock. No wonder they're all lining up over here. Because, of course, that's where the money is. Zip code level. But remember, where do we want to get? We want to get smaller than a zip code all the way down to what? Block. block. Yes, the block group. Since these tracks are good, usually you'll find anywhere from about three to sometimes five, six block groups in a you know, zip code, at least in metro areas. When you go down to the, the uh, rural area, you know, it's like, just an FYI, because I know you all are really interested in this. You know, I started here in 99 with the SBDC as a Terran SBDC. I was part-time. Darn it, the director wouldn't give me a full-time job. So finally I said, you know what, you know, I'm going to head on down to because Navarra College in Corsicana. Any of y'all ever been to Corsicana? Yeah, it's a really nice town. We 
Would you want to live there? Well, it's a great place to visit. Okay. So for me to be a director full time, 2007, headed on down the course of Canada, lived there for six and a half years. It was totally different. In four counties, I covered four counties, Limestone, Freestone, Navarre, and Oxford, Ellis. It was pretty well more of a metro area. But this is the, the one thing I quickly learned. With only 250,000 population in all four counties, what's our population of Tarrant right now? Anybody know? It's about, it's, Tarrant County is two million. We, kaboom, we're huge. You know, you almost say, well, this must be like shooting fish in a barrel. No, because you're always dealing with people. And everyone has their own unique needs. But down in Navarra, I had to learn to communicate very differently. Everybody knew my business. You know, when you're in a small town, everybody knows your business. You know, but what, some of the unique things down there, you know where kids play down in Corsicana oftentimes? The front yard. Y'all, any of y'all remember growing up if you're a boomer and you played in the front yard instead of the backyard? Very, very different dynamic. So it was a great experience for me. I sure was darn glad to be home and come back and be director up here. So, you know, that's just a little on the side. So let's go back to the presentation. So as you can see, this is zip code level. And again, we want to get down to the block group. So if you scroll down, Note, there's your top, they give you ten, a list 10 at a time, but if you look real closely, you can, oops, let me get back over here. If you look real closely on this, come on, you can, you can see where you have a list of, it goes 6,774. You know, do y'all just want to keep clicking through? Probably not. Yeah. However, there's three little arrows here. It's the last two are two separate arrows. You can click on them together. and. In just a minute, I'm going to show you what happens when you go all the way to the end, to number 6774, or 5, whatever's next. I'm going to show you in just a second. So let's go back over here. Now we're going to look at really a key piece, the demographics. But it's not just demographics. It's consumer expenditures. It's labor analysis. And in this piece, we start out, it defaulted to what city you put in up front. We put in Fort Worth, didn't we? So, this is actually an outline of the city of Fort Worth. Did y'all think it was just all nice and smooth? And now I can blow the map up and it won't look so jagged, but this is, this is very reflective of over the years, the city of Fort Worth annexing all the area. I grew up in North Richland Hills, you know, first through uh, high school, first grade through high school. My address that held my whole life there was Fort Worth, Texas. It's not Fort Worth, Texas now. It's Richland High School. It's North Richland Hills. But when I first came in or moved here from Hearst at half of at six years of age, I was, um, you know, I I thought I always lived in Fort Worth. And of course now we know that it's been very specific in what cities you may have. If you go in here and just want to search North Richland Hills, you know that's the city you need to find. It. Remember, every city is in this database. So. I could zero in on the city of Fort Worth, but that's a very large geographic area, and we want to drill down. So what I'm going to do up here, this is for a place, and again, remember you can download all these reports. So I'm going to have two choices besides that. I can do what's called a boundary search. I can blow the map up, you know, it's a Google map, and I can just start clicking points on the map where I want just to analyze this area very specific area. Just so I could say I could do it, I once created 15 points. Now it was a meaningly, meaningless map. That wasn't the point. I wanted to go out there and say, how many of these can I really get away with creating? But you can zero in on a very specific, blow up the map, zero in on a specific area just to see what do the demographics look like? What do the consumer expenditures look like in the labor force? Labor force tends to aggregate around the employer, by the way. You know, if I'm Acme Brick, then that's where it's going to aggregate those employees. So that's a custom boundary. But perhaps the best piece, the key piece, is when you can go around uh, and enter an address. Remember, any address in Fort Worth is in this database. 3816 Alta Mesa Boulevard, 76133. How many of y'all know where that area is, Alta Mesa and McCart? 
Okay, that's where my salon was for 18 years. And, you know, point to be made about that, but uh, has, does anybody, I, I don't know, because y'all are youngsters, you're much, much younger than me, so y'all may not have, uh, be able to recollect going back to that period of time. But if you had have gone in the late 70s, 80s even, you would see a very different Alta Mesa in McCart. It was vibrant, it was growing fast. The Candle Ridge neighborhood was right across Alta Mesa, and I sure coveted those customers. And then one day, the city, and I love the city of Fort Worth, I do, but they decided we needed to go Section 8. Things happen to businesses very, very quickly. And in 90, that was 92, I heard wind of it. 93, the wind got stronger. In 94, it was total reality. And it took me actually two years, 94, year and a half. 94, and then April Fools, it really was April Fools of 95, I closed my business. Demographic changes like that were dramatic. And so are the, the results of, you know, the uh, value of homes that go down. I had a home that I then sold 10 years later. Uh, but here's also the point of revitalization. In this day and time when cities do revitalization, it's a very, very different approach than it was 20 years ago, 10 years ago even. And so the city of Fort Worth, I don't know how many of you are aware of this, actually contracted with a company, and this is a good almost a year ago now, a contract with a company called TIP Strategies. TIP, T-I-P Strategies. Google it and kind of sidebar, if you do, you're going to find on their website an incredible tool called the Geography of Jobs. And from all the way from, I think, even 90, maybe it was two, no, no, it was 90, all the way to today, you're going to watch nationwide a, a stravaganza of jobs being created and, and just disappearing. Go, go look at it. It's a great tool. Great tool to introduce to students to Geography of Jobs. Tip strategies was hired uh, in, it was actually 2011 when I was still in Navarra. City of Waxahachie contracted with Tip Strategies and I lived in Navarra County, but I serviced Ellis County and the chamber asked me to be on the committee. Well, it was all decided I could not be on the committee because I didn't live, live in Ellis County, so they made me a uh, advisor to the committee. For two years, I got to go through that engagement with tip strategies on, st on strategic planning. And it was amazing what they did. Now, interesting, I was not allowed to be on the committee, but they made me co-chair of the downtown committee. That's what's great about rural areas. They can kind of make up their own rules if they want to. Well, here's the great news. Tip strategies came to Fort Worth. The, the strategic plan is now rolling out. And the point of all this, this area is now a, one of the five major areas for revitalization. I think we're going to see some really interesting things happen in that area within the next five years. Oh, and there are other areas too. So y'all should go on the uh, City of Fort Worth to the Strategic Plan or the Economic Development Department, which uh, the Economic Development Department, I'm in the same building they are on the, the corner of Rosedale and 35. It's called the Business Assistance Center. If y'all ever want to come visit our office, Give me a holler. I'll be, I'd love to give you a tour of that facility and the two incubators that we have located there. So if you put in the address, then you choose either the radius or you're going to choose a drive time. Now again, you know, we're driving cars. You know, we, we don't drive, ride horses anymore. You know, we drive our cars. So it's more realistic to go to drive time, isn't it? But you can do a radius report on it. Demographic overview, consumer expenditures, or labor force. And then click create. The much smoother outline, isn't it? You're not, not as much of a geography as when you looked at the city of Fort Worth. But this is a 10 minute drive time specifically from that address. Now, I would dare say it's not rush hour. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, all bets off there. You know. I lived in Fort Worth my whole life, and I am shocked that when I get off work, and I'm at the corner of Rosedale and 35, it's still going to take me 40 minutes to get home. You know, and I'm over, I live over by the Northwest Campus. You know, I, I do not go up 35. That's crazy. I go all the way around 30, and I'll get there faster. But, oh, my gosh, you know, it's very, very reflective of how fast Fort Worth and Tarrant County is growing. 
And nationwide, we have a problem, folks. Our infrastructure, streets, roads. You know, and it's unfortunately, we live in a city, Fort Worth, or actually Tarrant County altogether. Tarrant County has dollars, and they're starting to put those dollars into, uh, into the infrastructure, and that's good for us, but it's very inconvenient, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, do I have a, a, a vote on that? A vote? Yeah, it is absolutely inconvenient. But it is also going to maintain our, uh, our economy also. So from here, you can see that outline. Now, I've got consumer expenditures listed there. When I click on the map, you know, and I, I created the report for personal care services by block group, if you look very closely, do you see these tiny little outlined areas? Each one of those are block groups. And we see a sea of yellow and a little bit of orange over here, but that tells us that that's probably not the, the place you want to necessarily locate your salon supply, you know, your, uh, you know, your beauty salon. Maybe. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It depends on your target market. You know, I, I think something like a Fantastic Sands could probably work pretty well there. You have to look at who are you targeting, because everybody needs a haircut. Or, you know, I, I, I think most of us do get a haircut. <laughs> it's not the 70s anymore, people. You know, so we do get a haircut. The, uh, I'm sure some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> so the, uh, again, this is all the way down by the block group, and, you know, it is by total, total dollars. If you switched it to average, you'd see a different pattern. So average, compared to total. Now, if I'm going to grow, starting a business, I'm going to know what the total dollars are going to be. You know, average doesn't mean any, as much to me, but it depends on what type of information you need. So from there, now that actually is, and I think we're going to go all the way back to that slide I was telling you about. We're kind of near the end of this. If you go all the way to the bottom, you click on the double arrow, you actually get yourself to the whole U.S. This is the United States. It's a back door that do not tell GIS planning and size up that I showed you the back door. You know, they may take my back door from me. I doubt it. You know, but, so do you know what all those little red dots represent? Beauty salons. Beauty salons. Did you ever think, if I'd have gone for barbershops, I bet you it may not look exactly the same. But ladies, what, I mean, there's only one other industry that I've really found that is, looks pretty similar to this, and it's churches. It is, you know, you, you can do the same thing with churches and say, wow. But if you ever want to look at not just locally, you can, I could have done it by the state. It depends on how much I want to spread out. And I could then hit the consumer expenditures, and there you go. Aren't you happy that we live in Texas? There are dollars in this state. We are certainly a, you know, a, a, a thriving economy here. Now, has this tool been help, helpful for y'all so far? Yes. Okay. Just because you're great students, go to TexasSiteSearch.com and you'll be able to use the state tool. It's very, very similar. It's a little bit more complex, but you can go anywhere in the state of Texas with this tool and create some very, very similar reports. Do a few different things as it relates to available properties. So it does tend to target a little bit different group. Size of target small business owners. Now the uh, uh, SBA, Small Business Administration, has size up on their website, but they only have the three-legged stool. They live, leave out that last piece I showed you, which is the most dynamic piece. But you could go to the SBA website, and they'll make you register for theirs, uh, the, uh, and you could get to that, that three-legged stool and you know, drill around in other states. You know, but, you know, for our area, of course, we've got that four-legged chair and no username, no password. Why would I do that? Because, A, I don't want to keep up with the names to begin with. It's very tedious setting up your database and having people register. And I want, I, I want to just remove all barriers. Okay? I may never see the, in fact, I'll guarantee you, there's no way we can reach each and every small business out there. But the more there's access to really good information, the better decisions. At the end of the day, it's about facts. It's not about what you think, what you feel, what you believe, what you hope is true. It's about facts. The more facts you have, the better decisions you're going to make. So as many as, as much as possible, 
I like to have resources that are very open and available for everybody. Questions? Yeah, they'll give you age ranges too. You'll be able to color code maps so you know where it is. You know where it is. I could just do a tutorial online if you get questions. I mean, right now it's easy to kind of remember. Sure. This, but yeah. Start doing it on my own. Is there a good tutorial? Yeah, at the very, very first part, you'll see, um, you know, with this presentation, you'll see where there's a link you can go to the tutorials, and that'll help you out there. I have to excuse myself, but if I can endorse you and your team real quickly, uh, a lady who works for her name is Kathy Trent. Yes. And if you have owned a small business, you need to go see Kathy. Yeah, and absolutely. Kathy is um, uh, is Asian. You know, she reaches out to the Asian population, and she services anybody. All my advisors do. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. And uh, you know, I also have an Hispanic advisor who reaches out to the Hispanic uh, population. Of course, he services anyone and everyone. I have uh, uh, two. The other two advisors are QuickBooks Pro certified, and one of them in his other life was a CPA. So we provide very, you know, uh, technical services, but we have very strong skill sets. And all of them are familiar with the databases, though most people usually come to me when they really want to get into the, uh, get into the weeds, as they say. Any other questions? Are we good? Okay, this is located off of Rosedale. 35. 35 in Rosedale. So, if, uh, if there's anything else I can do to help y'all before this next session, I'll be more than happy to do that. Otherwise, uh, you know, there's still probably a lot of refreshments out there. Or maybe you can catch the tail end of uh, one of the other events. Thank you so much. I appreciate